your brother reciting the Qur'an in the same accent that was recited by the Prophet ﷺ 1,400 years ago. This book has been preserved. There is not a book like that. This book, the language of which, when the pagan Arabs heard it, it was enough to make them embrace Islam. Because they knew that no man could have written words of such beauty and eloquence, eloquence and power and uniqueness. And the Qur'an challenged them that if you believe this book is from anyone else than Allah, bring one surah like it. And they could never do it. This Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, has laws. Has laws. So upright. So clear, so straight, so perfectly adapted to the needs of human beings. And this is something I want all of us to think about as Muslims. The laws of the Qur'an, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, they're not for some time 1,400 years ago. These laws are for us today living in the 20th century. There is not one command or one prohibition in the Qur'an that is out of date for another time and another place. Wallahi, whoever says that is, so, is someone who has left Islam. The Qur'an today is as good and as perfect for human beings as it ever was. Because it is from Allah. And if you examine and you think about these laws, they are so perfect. How could any man think of these things? How could any man have put these things down and understood the human being so perfectly? It could only be from the one who created all things. This is a huge subject to discuss it. I ask you brothers and sisters to research, to find out, to study for yourself. From the simplest things, the use of the smallest sunnah using a miswak. Now we are told, brush your teeth twice a day at least. But 1,400 years ago, Islam instituted the miswak. Even a simple thing, the Prophet ﷺ told us, advised us, when you put your sandals on, sit down. What's so great about that? A brother told me he was studying a book, and he found in this book on a medical journal that such and such percentage of back problems came from people trying to put their shoes on standing up. A simple thing. This is the smallest thing. But if you look at the laws concerning the Sharia laws, the divorce laws, you will find that Islam is full of incredible wisdoms and insights into human nature that no human being could achieve. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us in His book. كُلِّ الَّذِينَ كَفُرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَكِينَ هَتَّى تَتِّيَمُ الْبَيِّنَ رَسُولٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ يَتْلُ صُحُفًا مُتَحَرًا Never will the disbelievers from the people of the book or the mushrikeen leave off their disbelief until there came to them Rasulu min Allah, a prophet from Allah, reciting to them a purified scripture containing upright laws. This is what we have. The pure scripture with the upright laws Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has given us, my brothers and sisters, proof upon proof upon proof. And I've only touched upon this subject so that we can know ourselves and we can prove to all of humanity that what Allah has revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is most certainly the truth. That Islam is certainly the deen before Allah. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is most certainly his last and final messenger. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakallah khair. You've been very patient, mashallah. And uh, uh, before I uh, continue <coughs> with the questions and answers, I would, uh, I, would like also, I would like to thank all of you, mashallah, for coming here tonight because it's my pleasure to be able to give you some bit of knowledge that I've got to you. Really, it's my pleasure. So I would like to thank you and I'd like to thank the mosque, this mashallah, the brothers, and all the community who have built this, mashallah, beautiful mosque. And may Allah reward all of you.
I mean, inshallah, hopefully we'll all share in the reward of Mark's Shahada today, inshallah. <clears throat> so the first question, we won't take too many questions. Uh, very good question here. If in Islam we believe that the Bible, along with the other books, was sent from Allah prior to the Qur'an, why does the Bible contain contradictions such as the example you gave of the light and the darkness and the night and the day, uh, meaning being created before the sun? The question again. Sorry, it's a bit difficult. I'm holding this anyway. Okay, so the question is, how come the Bible contains contradictions? <clears throat> if we believe in the previous books. The first thing is, brothers and sisters, is that the Qur'an, and this is very important, because sometimes Christian missionaries confuse us on this issue. The Qur'an does not tell us to believe in the Bible. The Qur'an does not mention the Bible. Nowhere in the Qur'an is the Bible mentioned. In fact, even the Bible doesn't mention the Bible. Because the Bible, in fact, even if you ask, Ten different Christian groups, what the Bible is, they will tell you and give you ten different books. So even the Christians don't know what's the Bible. <clears throat> the Catholics have 16 books more than the Protestants. And the Mormons have an extra book altogether. And if you look and you go and you find ancient manuscripts, such as the Codex Sinaiticus, you'll find that it has books that we don't even know about in the Bibles today. So what is the Bible anyway? The Bible anyway is from the Greek word Biblos, which means a collection of books. These books are there because some Christian councils of various Christian denominations decided that these were the authoritative scripture according to their interpretation. So the Qur'an does not in any way tell us to believe in the Bible. All the Qur'an tells us to believe in is in the books that were revealed to the messengers who came before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of which the ones that have been mentioned in the Qur'an is the Suhfa, which is given to Ibrahim, the Torah, which was given to Musa, the Zabur, which was given to Dawood, and the Injil, which was given to Isa, and the Qur'an which was given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Those are the books that we are obliged to believe in them. We believe in them in the sense that Allah revealed these books to those messengers. However, Allah has told us in the Qur'an, and this is the aqidah of the Muslims, that these books have suffered changes, alterations and deletions. Some things have been left out and not mentioned and they've been kept secret by the Jews and the Christians and amongst some of those things are the descriptions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which they know about. And other things they have added and changed and corrupted. So the books that they have today which they call the Bible is not the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur. It contains something of the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur, and it contains some other things which they have added, and it also there is some things that they have taken out from the Torah and the Injil and the Zabur which should be there. This is what the Bible is. So we do not believe in the Bible. If you mean how come Allah has allowed those scriptures to be corrupted where he has not allowed the Qur'an to be corrupted, that is because Allah was always sending messengers. So when the Torah is corrupted, and when the Zabur was corrupted, Allah He sent Isa alayhi salam to remind the Bani Israel of those things which they had gone astray, and what had been corrupted, and what had they had deviated from. However, because the Qur'an is the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has promised to guard it from all corruption. In fact, the fact that Allah has promised to preserve it, and the fact that we have the Qur'an existing, 
word for word, letter for letter, the same as was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is one of the proofs and one of the miracles of the Qur'an. Walhamdulillah. Can it go on the floor? Maybe it can go on the floor. When proving the existence of God, some people ask, who created God? How do we reply? The Prophet ﷺ said, and he mentioned to us, that this is something from shaitan. And like all of the plots of shaitan and the statements of shaitan, they really represent foolishness and deception. It's a really a stupid question. In fact, we have already answered this question. It is a question that does not have a meaning. Anyway, the Prophet ﷺ said that we should say when we hear this, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim and we should say, "Kul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad." In fact, this surah is an answer to this question. This, this surah is an answer to this question. If you ask who created Allah, we say Allah is one and He is a samad meaning He is the one upon whom all things depend while Allah depends upon nothing. Lam yalid, He was not born. Walam yulad, and nothing gives birth to Him. Walam yukullahu kufuwan ahad. And there is nothing which can be likened unto Allah. Meaning Allah is not like the creation. So Allah is a samad and He is unlike the creation. So this question is only a question that is being asked about a created thing. We ask, who created the tree? Because the tree is a temporary thing and a needy thing that is created. Who created the stars and the sun and the moon and you and me? We are temporary things that have a temporary existence. We have a beginning and we have an end. So we can ask that question about the created things. This question does not exist about one who is the creator but is not created. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. There is nothing like Allah, so you are not making a sensible question. Allah is not like the created things, so we, do not, we cannot ask this question about Allah. Because Allah is unique. This is one way to explain the answer to this. And by the logic that we used, the logic that we used, that Allah must be, His nature must be different from that which He created. He must be. There's a very nice example that I also use. This is from logic. This is from logic. And this is another way you could explain it to somebody. If, for example, I said today, uh, I want to lift up, what's the, the, the member here, yeah? I want to lift it up. So I try to lift it up. I can't do it, obviously. So I ask someone to help me. I say, can you help me lift it up? He says, I will help you on the condition that he helps me. And he says, I will help him on the condition that he helps me. And he says, well, I will help him on the condition that he helps me. Everybody says, I will only help if someone else helps me. Everybody says that. Will the member ever be lifted? If everyone makes that condition. It will stay, no, because it will never end. Everyone will be saying, I need someone, I will not help you unless you help me, I will not help you unless you help me. Sounds like the Muslims again, anyway. So, inshallah, may Allah help us. So, this is the similitude. Think now. If you ask this question, who created the Creator? And then we say, well, if someone created the Creator, then who created that Creator? Then who created that Creator? And who created that Creator? You will have creators creating creators ad infinitum. And just as this member will never be lifted, you will never get anything created. It's the same example. 
but the creation is here. 